With all of the Saint-14 stuff popping up in the game recently, Helm of Saint-14 is back, there's the quest line and all that, I figured it's a good time to have a chat about our old friend, Ward of Dawn. Ward of Dawn went from being one of the most vital PvE supers in the game to something you accidentally do if you hold the button for a nanosecond longer than you were supposed to. So, what happened? Before we go to the present, we'll venture into the past where Ward of Dawn was more than just a safety zone. It could give you Blessing or Weapons of Light, Weapons of Light being a pretty substantial damage boost to your entire team, and Blessing of Light being an overshield that refreshed every time you entered Ward of Dawn. There was never a reason not to be using it in certain PvE content, but the times you would be using it purely for its defensive capabilities were a bit rare, although there were a few. During the Templar encounter, you could use it as protection while the boss shot at you. During the Abyss section of Crota's End, it was helpful to survive crossing the bridge, especially with Armor of Light. During Skolas, you could use it to help protect against his cannon. And during War Priest, it blocked a bunch of his cannon shots. So. Sure, it's not helpful on every single boss fight, but it definitely had its defensive moments as well. The question is though, if you weren't getting Blessing or Weapons of Light, would you still have used Ward of Dawn in Destiny 1? I think some people would've, but we'll never be certain. That brings us to Destiny 2, where Ward of Dawn usage has been essentially zero. I've seen it used two times. Both were in Trials to lock down power ammo. And Ward of Dawn did technically get nerfed. It doesn't accept as much damage before breaking anymore, but that's not the main reason why people don't use it. So what's the problem with Ward of Dawn? Why isn't it getting used? Part of it is obvious. No more weapons or blessing of light. A 25 to 35% damage boost for 25 to 40 seconds was insanely good. Being able to stack a blessing of light on top of another bubble was even better. But... In a way, at least from a balance perspective, I can see why those buffs are gone, and it's sort of why something like Gallarhorn was a problem in PvE in year one and why it was nerfed. If I'm a designer, and I need to balance something around the fact that most teams are going to have a 30% damage buff, that puts me in a weird spot. Because if I balance the fight around that fact, then anyone who doesn't have a 30% damage buff is in a predicament. But then if I balance the fight thinking that no one has it, it makes it much easier, potentially, for the people who do have the 30% damage buff. So I get why Weapons of Light is gone, it's just unfortunate that a large part of Ward of Dawn was the attachment to buffs. This is likely why there will never be an exotic that brings back Weapons of Light to Ward of Dawn. Although I do think something like Blessing of Light is much more likely because it doesn't impact the game the same way that Weapons of Light does. Ward of Dawn itself as an ability is still somewhat strong. It creates a fantastic safe zone for you and your team when you're in trouble. Armor of Light will keep you alive in 99% of cases. It's great for lockdown. The larger part of the issue to me is that Destiny 2 has not introduced enough situations where it's more beneficial to have a Ward of Dawn as opposed to a more offensive super or even a different subclass entirely. Think about Prestige Nightfalls, for example. How many modifiers are there that mess with your health regeneration? Attrition and momentum, things that inspire movement to get back health in some way. The last thing you'd want to do is trap yourself in a Ward of Dawn with low health and no way to get it back. You'll basically never need Ward of Dawn in anything easier than a Nightfall because, well, it's all really easy and there are no stakes. And then in Nightfall and more difficult activities, due to the new revive system, the stakes aren't as high compared to Destiny 1. Death is more forgiving and you don't have that absolute desperation to stay alive anymore because you can come back, whereas in Destiny 1, you couldn't. Ward of Dawn helps you survive things, sure, but oftentimes just surviving something isn't really doing anything to push you forward in a situation, although I guess not surviving means having to start over. It can give you an offensive edge against big melee targets like gladiators, but considering it feels like half the time you get slammed against the wall and die anyway, 
I don't know how effective it really is. You could just use a shotgun like Legend of Acrius anyway to get nearly the same effect. Or you could just burn a damaged super. We also have other abilities that replicate the intended Ward of Dawn effect on two other classes by default. Titan Towering Barricade provides a short-term solution of needing cover for whatever reason. To regenerate, to give you a breather, or to give you an escape option. You rarely need it to last a long time. Warlock's Healing Rift provides a similar effect. To create a zone where you have a greater ability to stay alive or just straight up eat the damage that is being thrown at you. And then to a more obvious degree, Empowering Rift gives you a damage boost. The same thing that Weapons of Light did, except it's more on demand than Ward of Dawn was, although without as much freedom, and it can be used by any Warlock. In raids, we've yet to have that boss encounter where backing behind cover frequently is necessary. Argos maybe being the one exception, but even then there's often enough cover around you anyway that you aren't desperate for it. The one fight that I can think of where you would want Ward of Dawn for cover reasons is the Pyramidian due to the disappearing cover, but that's probably for prestige mode only. However, it's not as simple as just creating fights that would enhance Ward of Dawn's capabilities as mobile cover, because if you create fights that seemingly require Ward of Dawn, then any group without a Titan, as rare as those groups might be, are going to have a much more difficult time without some sort of other mechanic being involved or some other workaround. Also, as a sidebar with Helm of Saint 14, the whole guard mechanic activating the blinding effect perk is, in my opinion, pretty lackluster. You need to be right up on an enemy, activate the guard, and then they're blinded for a second. You can't walk up to enemies while already guarding. That's pretty weak. Finally, it's just plain not as fun to drop a Ward of Dawn versus an offensive super. You want to shield bash some fools, or you want to drop a bubble on them? Yeah. So, that's it. Some reasons as to why Ward of Dawn isn't utilized in Destiny 2. Some obvious, some maybe not as much. I'm not sure what they could really do to make Ward of Dawn more important right now. Obviously, a huge part of its importance was the damage boost that it gave, but again, it wasn't like the cover aspect was used a ton in Destiny 1, although you could optimize your placement of the ward for the best cover possible while also giving the damage boost. But if Ward of Dawn is going to continue to be the support thing that it is, it either needs a more supporty feel to it, or it needs to have some sort of damage aura on it, or something that makes it more than just really beefy temporary cover, especially in a game that emphasizes movement in moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.